Hello, my beautiful badasses, and welcome to this Libra Solar Eclipse happening October 14th, 2023. This is a big, big deal, okay? You're probably already feeling it. We are already in the effects of this eclipse. It is powerful. It is bringing in a little bit of a draining and heavy energy, really showing us the parts of our lives that feel unaligned, that don't feel balanced, that don't feel harmonious, that need to be shed, okay? <laughs> that is what this Libra solar eclipse is about. This is a south node solar eclipse, so it is pretty much directly on the south node, only a few degrees away. So this is a full solar eclipse, and it is a powerful one. All right, we're going to talk about it. So if you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle, and I do astrology here on this channel. I offer astrology readings. I also do life coaching for the multidimensional badasses, healers, coaches out there as well. So if you would like to find out more about my services, always see the description below. I have an astrology course as well if you want to learn astrology in a very easy and relatable way. And yeah, let's get into it. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram and Facebook, what are you doing? Okay, if you want some badassery in your life, some empowerment, all of the things that I have to offer, you need to follow me on my social medias because you're missing out. I also have a Patreon where you can get exclusive astrology content for only $5 a month right now. It probably will be raising for new people here soon, so get in on that as well. Anyway, so going into this Libra solar eclipse, this is such a big deal. Okay, so a solar eclipse is a new moon that is amplified. Okay, so as I always start with, what the fuck is a solar eclipse? A solar eclipse is a new moon, so what the fuck is a new moon? A new moon is when the sun and the moon align in the sky, therefore the sky goes dark right? So when a solar eclipse happens, this is in alignment in such a way where it is even more powerful because it is close to the south node. And the south node deals with karmic debts, karmic situations, past situations, the things that are draining us in our lives, the things that are really taking up a lot of our energy that can feel very karmic, that can feel very, you know, tangled and tied to different things right and so okay really quick and you do want to stick around for the rest of what i'm about to say so just give me one second because we have a collaboration happening and it is with aura aura is a badass spiritual app for pretty much anything that you're struggling with manifestation meditation health and wellness coaching healing breathing exercises like it goes over it all so if you are a spiritual being on this earth if you are into spirituality which i am guessing you are if you're watching this video this is a perfect app i use aura to meditate i use aura to do mindset work they have different frequencies on there to relieve your anxiety and just so many amazing things on there their app is honestly really really amazing i've used aura for manifestation meditation sound frequency frequency and healing just so much and they just have so much to choose from on there like instead of scrolling through the thousands and thousands of videos on YouTube and all of that it's like Aura is very organized and just has so many different things on there you can find classes you can find little courses and just all kinds of things for really anything on your spiritual journey that you're looking for they say that it's pretty much Spotify for your mind and soul and I would have to really agree with that statement so right now you can get started for free okay completely free when you use my link below. The first 500 people that sign up get a free trial. You'll also get an exclusive 25% off as well when you use my link below for the free trial. And with all that out of the way, let's get back into talking about this crazy Libra solar eclipse. This solar eclipse is happening in the sign of Libra. Now, what is the sign of Libra? So I feel like I can speak on this because I am literally a Libra sun, but the sign of Libra deals with balance. It deals with harmony. It deals with relationships because it's ruled by Venus, the planet of relationships and it's an air sign so it deals with connection and communication and learning how to speak about different ideas and see things from different perspectives and, and communicate and connect with others and so it's a very social sign it usually deals with a lot of elegance and class balance and harmony you know these are a lot of the traits that we see in Libra Libra is also very dualistic it deals a lot with duality things that are black and right white or fair or unfair right or wrong good or bad so we can see a lot of this kind of thinking in the collective right now right a lot of things that may feel unfair in our lives or in the world a lot of things that can feel unbalanced we may be seeing things from whole new sides 
And we may have to shed old ways of looking at things. We may have to be open to seeing things from new angles because that helps us overcome a lot of the one-sided thinking or the one way of thinking that we can get into sometimes. And so this solar eclipse is very much about being able to be artful in the way that you perceive, in the way that you communicate, in the way that you express yourself to other people. It is about the art of relationships, learning when to lean back versus when to lean forward, learning how to connect with others and see the beauty in the connection of others and in communication and in you know seeing things from all different angles. Libra is a sign that really shows us our polarity. So it will bring in different people in our lives to kind of mirror what's going on internally, right? So there's a lot of duality here. There's a lot of mirroring here. If there's something going on in your life, it's likely mirroring something going on within you. It's likely trying to show you something that you're not seeing. It really reveals blind spots, right? And so this is something we really have to remember. And I actually did a How to Thrive in October live which i do every month for each month over on my patreon and we really talked about the art of duality and holding duality because that is really a huge component and key to this october is really learning how to hold both the good and the bad the right and the wrong the good days and the bad days the the i'm on top of the world moments and then next thing you know you get bad news moments right it's like being able to hold it all right being able to walk with duality and not make it you know into all these different things or mean all these different things or whatever right and to kind of see things from from all perspectives it's showing us the beauty and the importance of collaboration of compromise of relationships and finding the middle ground and where we really yearn for peace in our lives or where the peace that once was is no longer right? Because the South Node deals with karmic debts and things getting swept away and things decreasing and us letting go. And, and this is a solar eclipse, new moon. This is a new beginning of us letting go of maybe old parts of ourselves, old ways of identifying, old perspectives, letting go of certain places in our lives that don't feel balanced, that don't feel aligned, that don't feel peaceful anymore, that don't feel harmonious, learning how to set boundaries learning where the line has been blurred between self and other, maybe where we've been giving too much or people pleasing or, you know, looking at things from other people's point of view. You know, something that I say a lot is that that's really helped me in terms of people pleasing is because I'm a Libra and I'm always looking at other people's potential opinions and sides and feelings and thoughts and all of that. And I'm really basing a lot of my identity and myself throughout life. I've done a lot of this where I've based my identity, self actions, how I say something, how I behave with something on what the other person may think or what other people may think. And it, it got to the point where I would lose myself doing that, right? So I had to really learn the how to kind of break this habit and a realization that really came through was, Tani, you are putting yourself in other people's POV all the time, but what about your own POV? And I realized that being in my own POV that a lot of the people I was worried about, <laughs> I didn't actually care for, right? It's like, you know, it's like you, you know, it's like an example is like maybe you work with, you know, a bunch of coworkers that, you know, like you're always worried that like, are they going to like me? Do they like me? Did I say something wrong? Are they mad at me? Like you're always worried about what they're thinking. And then one day you kind of realize like, are you even friends with these people? Are you like actually gonna like build a bond with them and a relationship and a connection with them? Like, would you hang out with them outside of work? Do you wanna be around them? If not, then why are you worried about what they think, right? Like that's really put, putting yourself back in your POV. Like, do I like this person to be caring so much about what they think? Like, and do I, how do I feel, right? And so that's really putting yourself back into your own po point of view. And so some of that could definitely come up with this Libra solar eclipse because this eclipse is also opposite Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries. So we're seeing a lot of our wounds to do with identity, to do with the self, to do with taking action, you know? We're seeing a lot of the areas where we've been on the fence, where we've been in maybe energy instead of like, you know, getting off the fence and deciding. And so the solar eclipse could come with a lot of big decisions to face certain things that we've been struggling with, to stand up for ourselves, to <clears throat> get rid of certain things in our lives that have, has, you know, that have lacked boundaries or that's no longer aligned, like I said before. Right, And so it's really bringing up a level of discernment, a level of kind of picking through and figuring out like where are certain relationships not aligned? 
where are certain people not aligned, where are certain behaviors not aligned, where are certain parts of ourselves not aligned. And to bring things back into balance, it's like we have to make a decision or we have to cut something off. And that's the thing. Libra energy can be very indecisive. So this could be, you know, whatever we're indecisive about is something that really, really drains our energy because we're going back and forth. Our energy is going in both directions and it kind of splits our energy, right? And so we don't have the full focus of energy to put towards one thing. And so this could really be coming up too. It's like, where we've been in that maybe energy, that back and forth energy, and it's draining us. And we have to finally make a decision and we have to finally move forward. And that's the thing about Libra, as much shit as Librans get for being indecisive, which we definitely can be, um, especially over little things. It's like once we decide, we decide because it is a cardinal sign. So there is this forward momentum. Once it has all the data and sees how things are for everybody, it's a, it, it's a very diplomatic, right? It's very diplomatic. It's very much about you know, collaboration and, and what do we want rather than what I want. And so once we have like all the data and everything, and then we make a decision that seems like the fairest decision, which may always not be, but <laughs> it may seem like that at the time from our perspective, then we kind of stick to that. Then it's like, okay, this is the decision, right? But it's just getting there. It takes a lot of analysis. It takes a lot of like going back and forth and and all of that. But the more that we go back and forth, the more that we sit on the fence, the more energy that we drain and use towards things that we may not even actually want. This is really huge for this Libra solar eclipse. And the solar eclipse is also in a very loose square with Pluto. It's coming up on a square with Pluto. So this can bring in a level of intensity. This can bring in a level of accountability. This can bring in a level of responsibility, a level of breakthroughs and trans big transformations right? A level of death and rebirth. And so this is something else that we really do need to be aware of and watch out for with the solar eclipse. So that is basically what I am seeing for this solar eclipse. Let me know down below if any of this resonates with you and what you see in your life right now. Also comment the word badass down below if you watch until this point because you are a mother effing badass. I appreciate you. Let me know your rising sign down below and you listen to your rising sign horoscope and if that resonates. I love you guys. Make sure to follow me on social media. Make sure to check out the description to, you know, get a reading, work with me more closely, whatever you want to do. Follow me on socials. Get on my Patreon. We are having parties everywhere. So come join the fun be social be collaborative with this libra solar eclipse and let's go ahead and get into what this means for your rising sign. Alrighty, starting with you my lovely libras this solar eclipse for you if you're a libra rising is the biggest because it's happening in your sign boo it is happening in your first house okay on the south node okay so uh yeah you got some uh shedding and purging to do with this one boo i'm sorry there's no other way to say it this is a new beginning of you really shedding what is no longer in alignment what is no longer in harmony what is no longer in balance what no longer feels good about yourself your life and who you are this is really you stepping into a more aligned and balanced version of you um so this is a new beginning that's like releasing a lot right? It's really releasing a lot. There can be a lot of decisions that you're making. There can be a lot of things that you've been back and forth with within yourself or with yourself, with your life, where this is like the eclipse. That's like, it's time to face this. It's time to shed this. It's time to let go of this. And it can create a lot of breakthroughs and bring up some potential tension in your relationships or with your home and family life. So you do want to watch out for that too. It really is kind of a time of death and rebirth. It's a time of you getting very clear on the things that are really holding you back and challenging you to move forward with who you are, yourself. You know, it could be a time of facing old wounds, facing old triggers, especially in relationships or with your partner in some way. <clears throat> it could be a time where you are also feeling a little bit more energetically drained. Um, your vitality could be a little bit more low, could feel a little bit more tired as your chart ruler Venus is in the 12th. So this could be a time where you need to do a lot of work behind the scenes to get organized on who you are and your life, your health, you know, get more discerning about things going on to take some of that pressure off so you can finally get more balanced within yourself and who you are. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra, for the solar eclipse. Let me know down below if that's resonating and what your rising sign is. I'd love to hear your feedback. Moving on to Scorpio dottings. So Scorpio risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So this is a massive purge, a massive shedding, a massive like cleaning out the closet kind of thing, right? <clears throat> what is no longer aligned with you, what is no longer in balance, what you are, what you need to get rid of, what you need to end, 
right? It's like you've been maybe going back and forth in your energy and it's been draining you so much and it's like you getting very clear about that with this solar eclipse so you can finally let go, so you can finally surrender, so you can finally like start healing, so you can finally get more clear on like certain habits, certain subconscious programming or certain things going on behind the scenes in your life that may be affecting your health or triggering issues at work. Um, things like this could really be coming up. This may be also something that you need to communica communicate about or get very clear on in terms of relatives, family, your environment, siblings, neighbors, etc. This could cause some intensity in those areas too. So definitely let me know down below, Scorpio, how it's going and what you're noticing coming up. I really appreciate it. So we're going to move on. And if you didn't see the beginning, go watch. We're going to move on to Sagittarius rising. So for Sagittarius rising, the solar eclipse is happening in your uh, 11th house of friends, collaborations, networking, marketing, you know, the different people that you mingle with and connect to. And so this Libra solar eclipse is a time where you could definitely be seeing some true colors here with some people that have been in your circle or that you've been networking with and where you may need to do some cleaning up in this area. You may need to do some releasing. This is a massive new beginning that is going to ripple for the next six months or so where you are seeing different angles, seeing different sides of the different people that you surround yourself with, the people that you're connected to, the people that you want to connect to. It could bring in new connections um, that are very karmic and karma isn't always a bad thing. So remember that, but it could also be releasing old connections that, um, no longer serve you or that are really keeping your life out of balance at this time and somehow this could be putting some pressure or, or intensity on your financial situation your income your resources in some way and cause you to make some big changes or have some breakthroughs in this area for you to really transform something so um this could also somehow play into your career your job your long-term goals your future etc so let me know down below sagittarius if that resonates and what you're noticing coming up I'd really love to hear your feedback, and if you didn't watch the beginning of this video, you're missing out, so go do that. So moving on to Capricorn Rising. So for Capricorn Risings, the solar eclipse is happening in your 10th house of your career, your long-term goals, your future, where you're going in life, and maybe your collaborations in terms of career and stuff too as well. So this is you getting really clear on the relationships, your connections, your communication, how you're going about balancing your career related life your public image your future all of that and how that's also relating maybe to your beliefs to teaching to education to travel and some of this could also be like making a big new decision leaving behind old karmic ties in terms of your career or old triggers old ways of thinking about certain things in terms of your career or for your long-term goals so you can get clear and move ahead and, and finally move on. And so this could be releasing, you know, an old goal or an old part of you or an old identity in terms of like how you've presented yourself or expressed yourself in the public eye and all of that. And it could be putting some pressure on you to really transform some things with yourself, right? You could also be dealing with some authority figure or something like that, but it is dealing with a lot of transformation with yourself as well with it squaring Pluto in your first. So let me know down below how that's going and what you're noticing. If you're a Capricorn rising, I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know your rising sign down below. And if you didn't miss, or if you did miss the first part of this video, go back and watch it because you are missing out, darling. So moving on to Aquarius rising. So for Aquarius risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your ninth house of teaching, learning, education, and travel, your belief systems, your worldviews, and things like this. So this is definitely a time where you could be getting very political, could be noticing yourself getting very political and very carried away by things going on in faraway places, things going on with other people, thinking a lot about other people, what's fair, what's not fair, what's balanced, what's not balanced, you know, justice, things like this could really be coming up um, for this solar eclipse for you. You could be like speaking a lot, communicating a lot. I would just remember that, you know, to not get too carried away into other people's opinions and other people's perspectives, right? Because you could kind of lose yourself in the process. And that's kind of a lesson I see here uh, with the solar eclipse for you to not lose yourself in the process, right? Because the solar eclipse is with the sun and the sun is already and fall in Libra and so this is a sign where the sun kind of loses itself in others and the solar eclipse is also opposing Chiron and Aries and so it could be trying to reveal to you some subconscious triggers or some subconscious things that you need to break through or transmute 
that maybe you weren't aware of and so if you look you will definitely see it and be able to do so this could also be going into your finances in some way or your investments or your financial future or you know something like that because venus is in your eighth so let me know down below aquarius how this is going for you and what you do notice coming up i would love to hear your feedback and if you missed the beginning go back and watch that so moving on to Pisces, the solar eclipse for you, boo, is happening in your eighth house. So this is definitely bringing up a lot of like occult related things, a lot of deep things, a lot of financial topics and themes, uh, investments, debt, and relationships and collaborations in these areas. So giving and receiving and what's fair and who has what or who owns what and how to collaborate and, you know, compromise in this area of finances and with relationships and finances. So this could be a really big topic for you right now. Uh, you know, a big focus on relationship here. And it could really be kind of showing you where you have certain triggers or certain things that need to be healed, where you have to make certain decisions, where you may have to cut some things off, where you've maybe lost yourself in what's good for we rather than what's good for you. So that could definitely be something that you're noticing coming up right now. So let me know down below how that's going, Pisces rising. And if this resonates, I'd love to hear your feedback down below. And if you missed the beginning, go back and watch that because you're missing out. Okay, so Aries rising. So this solar eclipse for you is in your seventh house of other people, relationships, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this eclipse is very much about that. It could be tying in your health, wellness, habits, and day-to-day -day routines as well with Venus in your sixth. So this is a time of you, you know, really seeing where either you or your partner or other people have been very back and forth or very on the fence, very in maybe energy. Um, where you've been giving a lot of energy to other people or where other people are kind of draining you potentially or this could be a big decision you're making in a relationship or new ways that you're learning to set boundaries or compromise within relationships so something like that could also be happening here this could also be causing some breakthroughs or big transformations within your long-term goals and your career and where you're going so let me know down below if you're in aries rising what's going on and how that's going for you um, i'd love to hear your feedback and if you missed the beginning go back and watch that moving on to taurus risings the solar eclipse for you is in your sixth house of your day-to-day -day routines habits work and health so this is a time of you really releasing and shedding certain things that are keeping you out of balance or out of alignment with your health and wellness and you know, work and things like that. This could be a time where you're dealing with a lot of relational stuff in terms of your job, in terms of your work, and where maybe you need to speak up for yourself or maybe where you've lost yourself and trying to please other people and, you know, all of that. If you missed the beginning of this video, it's definitely going to relate to you. But um, yeah, so this is definitely a time where you could see where you've lost yourself or where you need to cut certain things off to get your energy back, to come back into balance with who you are, to come back into alignment. Um, to bring more harmony to your life, to your wellness, to your routines, to your work, to your health. And uh, this could also be bringing up, you know, certain passions, creative projects, and hobbies that you have as well with Venus in the fifth. So uh, you could also be dealing with some belief system issues, some differences in views um, that could get a little bit extreme. So I'd be careful with that because it's a square in Pluto in your ninth from your sixth. Could be dealing with policies, rules, um, conditioning. Uh, but you could find some intense stuff coming up there so just kind of watch out for that if you're a taurus rising and let me know how that goes down below so moving on to gemini risings for gemini risings the solar eclipse is in your fifth house of uh play passion fun your heart you know dating romance hobbies so this could definitely be you know, these could definitely be topics that you're seeing come up. This could also really deal with relationships and, you know, romances and all of that. So this could be a time where you're really releasing things that are really keeping you out of balance, where you're really shedding, where you're really seeing certain karmic things to do with <clears throat> how you've been maybe influenced by others or going along with certain things that weren't really true for you. And so that could be definitely being brought up this time. It could also be making an impact um, on your investments, your wealth, your financial goals, and things like that that could be coming in. Um, so I would just kind of watch out for this. This could be bringing in like family and personal life too with Venus in your fourth. So let me know how that's going, Gemini. I'd like to hear below how you're feeling this eclipse so far. I'd really be interested to know if you missed the beginning. Definitely go back and watch that. So 
Moving on to Cancer Risings, the solar eclipse is happening for you in your fourth house. This is your private life, your home life, your personal life, things that are going on with your family and at home and behind closed doors. It's also bringing in a sense of community and communications and events and your neighborhood and your local environment in some way. And so this could definitely be a time where you are you know, there's some kind of new beginning starting here with your personal life and your family, but it's like involving you letting go of karmic things or cutting off certain karmic things as well. Maybe this could be a very nostalgic time, a time that's really bringing up the past. It could have you very focused on your private life and your personal life and feeling a little bit more introverted than usual. And it could also be putting some kind of strain or intensity on your relationships with others in some way. Um, but either way, this could also be like a decision and a communication um, a conversation that needs to be had personally or with family. Um, but yeah, it's definitely you kind of ridding yourself of something from the past potentially to come back into balance in your personal life. So let me know how that's going down below Cancer Risings. I'd really love to hear your feedback and what you're dealing with for this solar eclipse. And if you missed the beginning, then go back and watch that. So my fellow Libra, or not Libra, <laughs> my fellow Leo Risings, I'm sorry. Um, I'm talking about this Libra solar eclipse so much, but my fellow Leo Risings, this solar eclipse is happening in our third house, which is a really interesting and weird place. There's a lot of different things we can kind of see coming up with this. It can deal with our environment. It can deal with getting out more, exploring our surroundings and our local environment more, short trips, things like that. We can notice this throughout the month of October as well. Um, but this is also like content, communication, speaking, conversations, things like that. We're finding new ways to express ourselves and we're seeing ourselves from new sides. Um, but we're also seeing where we are, you know, having to collaborate or compromise on what we would normally do or how we normally would be or what we normally want for potentially relatives, family, siblings, things that are going on around us, certain errands that we have to run, certain things we have to take care of around us and in our community in some way. So some of that could be going on, but I think essentially this is like you know, because we're Leo Risings and ruled by the sun, this is a massive shedding of like an old identity, an old way of seeing ourselves, an old perspective. And we begin kind of seeing ourselves through others. Like if we're dealing with certain circumstances or situations in our lives, we need to ask ourselves what that is mirroring back in us that we need to let go of or shed because it's taking up energetic space, right? Now, this could also somehow be tying into validation, people pleasing, and our finances and resources with Venus being in our second house of those things, right? Um, and this could also be putting some intensity on our work, our health, our wellness, our habits, and our day-to-day -day routines for us to really transmute and transform something. We could go through like a pretty big death and rebirth here with our work, health, and day-to-day -day routines and needing to like really shed what is no longer working and holding us back, right? So that is what I'm seeing here for Leo Risings. Let me know down below, Leo Risings, if this is resonating and what you are noticing for this solar eclipse. I'd be very interested to hear about it. Um, and then also, if you didn't watch the beginning, go back and watch that because you're missing out. Okay, so Virgo Risings. For Virgo Risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your second house of income, money, and finances, and resources, priorities, and values. So a lot of those themes could be coming up at this time as you are really weighing out what's no longer in balance or harmony with your values, with your finances, and maybe you've been sharing those things with other people or you've been influenced by other people with those things. Maybe you've been um, giving up your own needs or your own wants for others. And so this is a time of really coming back into balance and kind of shedding some of those old behaviors or old patterns in some way. Um, this could really deal with like your own sense of worth and your own security within yourself with Venus in your first house being the ruler of this solar eclipse. And this could bring in as well, um, you know, some things that you're dealing with, with collaborative and relational finances and resource situations. So it really is a time of you getting very balanced in terms of like what you need, what works for you, what supports you. Um, and you know whether that be money resources etc so and, and letting go of things that aren't working for you right and, and kind of seeing new perspectives there and making decisions there so let me know down below if that resonated Virgo I'd love to hear what's going on with you and if you missed the beginning go back and watch that and with that being said that is the end of this video hopefully it was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one